Good morning, everyone. As I always, place your cross on first, and I'm sure you know what that is. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Lord Jesus, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for everything that you do for me. Ask you to use me as you seem fit, Lord Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit the Comforter to teach me so I can know how to teach others. And use me as you seem fit this day to do whatever it is that you want me to accomplish according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I'm going to start reading from Ezekiel 3, 17. And I read this last week, but I'm going to go in a little more in depth today. Quick, simple, sweet. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from, the, from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul now let me read let me go further to james 5 20 let's see what james 5 20 says let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his ways save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins you can't get no more self-explanatory than that you can't get no more self-explanatory than that what is this saying to do tell people Warn people. That's part of your duty as a Christian. Okay. Can I tell you what Jesus said? Jesus said, You don't light a candle and sit it under the nightstand. Right? You don't hide it once it's lit. You don't put it, uh, you don't cover it up. You put it on top of the nightstand. So the light will shine. Right? So the word of God is not to be hid for oneself. It's not freely given to you for you to just hold on to. For you to just hold. Let's go back to another story that Jesus talked about. About the man. It was a man, right? It was three men. And the ruler of the house gave each man some silver, a piece of silver. He gave one two he gave one three one five you see the one that had five whatever he went out and multiplied it he, he doubled it so he had ten pieces and the other man he multiplied it he got six pieces but the one that had two he just hid it he buried it in the sand he was so afraid of the ruler of the house you understand the ruler of the house came back so when the other man came back he was like well I'm going to give you even more so I'm going to I'm going to triple it. So he tripled it. So he went from five to even more. Then the other guy, he went from three to even more. The ruler of the house was like, he was proud of him because he spread it. He made more out of what he was given to him. Then the other man who hid it, he said, even what you got will be taken from you. So he took what he had and gave it to somebody else. Gave it to the man that had the most. To whom much is given, much is required. Do you understand? And if you not use what's given to you, it will even be taken away from you. Do you understand? So let's go back to what the word of God is talking about today. Warn folks. God did not give you the word of God for you to just hold it for yourself. It's like you ever watched the book of Eli, the movie about Denzel Washington. And uh, I think it was, I can't remember the other guy's name. But one guy, he was looking for the Bible. He was looking for the Holy Scriptures. He wasn't looking for it to help others. He was just looking for it to help himself. You understand? He knew it was power in the word, but he only wanted it for himself. And the book of, and Denzel Washington was holding the book. So when he found the book, he learned, searched for it for the wrong reason. And guess what happened? When he got it, he found out that Denzel Washington was blind the whole time. You understand? And the book was in Braille. You see, if he would have just looked for the right reason, I'm sure he would have got it from Denzel Washington, but he wanted it for the wrong reason. So guess what? It was taken away from him. You understand, the word of God is not meant 
to be hid. It's not. You see a lot of Christians today, they don't worry about their household. They don't worry about what's going on in their house. They don't worry about nobody else. They don't want to warn nobody. They rather condemn and let, let's just let people perish. <coughs> I've read two scriptures today. Ezekiel 3, 17, 17 through 19. And James 5, 20. Both of them involve telling people the truth. Telling people, warning people, telling them what their sin is. Not judging them or telling them what God has told you to tell them. You understand? What's the use? What did he tell his disciples to do? He said, go out and preach the word and tell people the kingdom of God has come unto you. Right? So the word of God is about word of mouth. Do you understand? I tell people all the time. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. You see, once you study the word, it's going to be in you. So when people talk to you, the word of God is going to come out of you. But you know, it's a lot of people that just go to church on Sundays, hear the word from the preacher, don't look at the Bible no more. Don't study it no more. It's not bearing any fruit. They're just doing it for themselves. To be known like, yeah, I go to church every Sunday. But they're not spreading the word. You see, that's one of God's other commandments, to spread the word. If you really don't know the math, you know, I posted something yesterday on Facebook. He said, tell the word to your children. Well, can I go in depth than that? If you're a child of God, everybody is your children. Right? Everybody's your brother. Everybody's your sister. Everybody's your mother. Jesus summed it up like this. Your, husband, your mother, your brother here to see you. Who are my mothers and my brothers? Who is my mother and who is my sister? But those who are doing my will. So you got to look at life the same way. God did not give you his word for you to hide it. It's got to come to a point in life, in your, a time in your life that you got to bring up God at least a few times a day in the midst of a conversation. I don't care how you bring him up. You bring him up. And if God tells you to tell somebody something, you tell him. Because if not, he's going to hold you accountable for it. The word of, the, of God is a lamp. He's going to hold you accountable for it. Spreading it. Telling people. I told you the story of Jonah yesterday. What did Jonah do? He warned the people of Nineveh. He said, hey, God will overthrow this place in 40 days and 40 nights. And they were like, okay, we got to do something about it. What did they do about it? They turned to God. You see, that's your whole purpose in life. To try to, if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Christ, your purpose is to spread the word so it can bear much fruit. I'm not talking about bearing fruit materialistically, because that's where a lot of people will twist the word up and be like, some a hundredfold, shaking down, pressed together, running over. But if you know the soul of the seed, if you read the last one in regards to the soul of the seed, he's talking about bearing fruit and fruit in regards to the word of God. You're not about material things, about material gain. God didn't say this so many times. Jesus didn't say this so many times. How hard is it for the rich to inherit the kingdom of heaven? It's harder for a camel to go to the eye of a needle than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So you already know it's not about earthly riches. Because the Bible says, seek things above and all else will be added to you. So guess what you're supposed to be doing? Seeking more knowledge. Seeking more wisdom. Studying to show yourself approved. Spreading the word of God to all who are willing to listen. And sometimes those who are not willing to listen because they are stiff-necked people. I'm sending you out to a rebellious house. I'm sending you out to people who are not of unfamiliar speech and unfamiliar language. I'm sending you to people who understand what you're saying. But how can they understand what you're saying if you're not saying anything? Now, where I live, ever since I've been living where I stay in Irvington out here, uh, I always saw it's, a, it's a, a house in the neighborhood and it always has a gate around it and the gate is always locked. Now watch this. The gate is always locked. I'm not finished yet. The gate is always locked. But inside the gate, you always see a cross lit up with Christmas lights on it. And it's year round. But the gate is locked. Do you see what I'm getting at? They, I can tell they're Christians. I can tell they're Christians, but their gate is locked. So as you do the math, they're hiding the word for themselves. They don't worry about their house. 
They know Christ's going to protect your house. I know Christ's going to protect my house. But aren't you trying to spread the good news so God Christ can protect other people and protect other souls and, and save other souls? Don't you want other people to be saved? No. Don't be holier than thou. You're not worried about that. I know the world is evil. I know the world has a lot of crazy things going on out there. Behold, I send you out as sheep among wolves. Not to be quiet. He said, Deborah, be wise as serpents and be harmless as doves. Wisdom, discernment. You understand? I don't know why people are not spreading the word. I just don't understand it. When God told me to eat this word up, I ate it. And I couldn't stop talking about it. And here it is, 10 years later, I'm still talking about it. And I'm not trying to glorify myself. I'm saying, once the word get in you and it's really in you, you got to get it out. You got to get it out. Sometimes I scroll through my timeline, I'm like, wow, that's a lot of videos God to compel me to put out there. Wow. That's a lot of videos within two and a half years. A lot of videos. It's not hard to talk. How many times you sit around and have conversations with people about nothing? You see what what's the, God is trying to change you? He said he's trying to do away with the vain conversations received from you, from your tradition of your father. Am I saying you're going to perfect? Am I saying you're going to talk about God all the time? No. I'm saying you're going to talk about God more now than the world. You're going to talk less about the world and more about God. He's going to be on the tip of your tongue. You know, I tell people all the time, it's not go what goes on the tip. Goes into a man that defiles a man, what comes out of a man that defiles a man. So he's talking about your words, right? So the more you eat the word of God, no matter what goes in you, guess what's going to come out of you? The word of God. Because it's in you. It dwells in you. If you read every book of the prophets, it's almost got the same exact rhetoric. Hey, I gave you some words, son. Go spread it. You go to Jesus' teaching. I gave you some words, son. Go spread it. He, keep, he met Paul. How long will you kick against the pricks? Instead of being against me, now you're going to be for me. And you're going to send you out to kings and rulers for my name's sake. To spread the good news. What's the good news? God is good. And his son is Jesus Christ. So that's the good news you spread. A few years ago, about a, about a year and a half ago, I, was, I used to go to the service station all the time. And I know it's good. Don't get me wrong. I know. But he caught me off guard. And it kind of made me feel bad. He was like, tell me something good. I said, I said, I'm still alive. And he was like, no. He was like, tell me something good. And then I thought about it. And he was like, God is good. You see, that's what's the good news. God. So what's the good news? All the word of God. So what's the good news? Jesus. So what's the good news? The Ten Commandments. So what's the good news? His stories. So what the good, it's not about you no more. It's not about you. It's not about Houston Beard. It's about God. That's the good news. That's the good news you're supposed to be spreading. You understand? Why hold something good that you know good for yourself and don't give it to nobody else? You see, the book of Eli, if you watch it, you'll see. The, even movies tell you how powerful the word of God is. You understand? Yes, it's a fantasy movie. But it's like some people out there that know God is good and know how good he is, but they only want to keep him for themselves. They don't want to spread it. They don't want to warn nobody. They just don't know. They are being held accountable. I am being held accountable for the sins of others in a way. Yes, God says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So if you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, that means you got to spread the word. Right? So it's going to start coming natural to you. It's not going to be unnatural. What's going to be unnatural is the world. The evil thereof. The things thereof. You understand? Am I saying you're going to be perfect? Am I not saying you're not going to have regular conversations? But as a Christian, you're always going to be looking for an opening to tell people about God. You're going to be a watchman. What does a watchman do? You understand? What does a watchman do? I was in the military. You sat back and waited, and you watched. And if something happened, you let people know about it. So as a watchman, when you're watching the people that God told you to do, 
wherever you go, wherever you work, I don't care if you work at McDonald's. If you're a watchman, you're paying attention, you're seeing, you're listening to what's going on, and then you're waiting for the opening in order to tell people the good news. Whatever it may be, rebuke, the good news. Compassion, the good news. The truth, the good news. It is what it is. You can't beat the system. God designed the system so the word of mouth can be powerful. Can be powerful. There's life and death in the tongue. And there's death in the tongue that's not being used. And guess what's going to happen to that tongue that's not being used? In my 10 year walk, I'd have ran into people, I'd have talked to people. I made a promise to God that I supposed to, God called me to preach, but I'm just not doing it. Huh. Wow. But the thing is, I understand because I've been disobedient before. I've been rebellious too. But I just don't understand. But it's not up to me to understand. It's just up to me to spread the word. Well, I guess I was talking about God to them right then. I guess they were doing what they were supposed to do right then also. You understand? Well, two are going together in my name, I will be in the midst. It's not about the crowd sometimes. Sometimes it's about the one in the 99. You know? But you got to tell the one in the 99. You got to watch and pay attention to who really wants God. And a lot of times God's going to bring those people to you. Right? Because your light going to be shining so bright that people are going to see your good works and they're going to glorify God. And they're going to glorify you. If you're seeking your own glory, this is earthly, sensual, devilish. It's not of God. It's not about you anymore. Look at me. Look at me. This ain't Facebook. You understand? This ain't Facebook. Where you're all about yourself. Selfishness. You understand? Some people change their profile picture 300 times and won't put one spiritual post, but they go to church every Sunday. Don't even talk about God, but they go to church every Sunday. For what? Are you trying to bear any fruit? Don't keep, don't keep waiting and God catch you slumbering. A little sleep, a little folding your hands to sleep. So shall poverty come upon you. It's more to it than just praying. Sometimes you gotta talk. You gotta tell you to talk about anything else. Let the storm come. Oh, everybody wanna talk about the storm. But you know what? You can prepare people for any storm in their life. Through who? Telling them about God. You can prepare them for anything that they're going through. You can go out and tell people to get provisions for their house. Build a storehouse. And stack all their storehouses and everything in their storehouse. They stocked up for Armageddon. And then God sent a swift wind and knocked that storehouse down. What all that preparation did? Nothing. Nothing. You got to prepare people a little differently these days. You got to warn them. You got to tell them what God tells you to tell them. If not, he's going to hold you accountable. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you what God tells me. It is what it is. Wait for your opening. Watch. Utilize the word of God that he gave you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You know, there's many ways to utilize the word of God. You can pray inside. You can pray outside. But sometimes God just want to hear your mouth. He said, deny me before men, and I will deny you before my Father, which is in heaven. Sometimes keeping your mouth shut is a form of denial. You ever notice that? It's a form of denial. Let me just, I don't know why I keep using adultery and stuff like that. You understand? But just like, let's say a husband or a wife know that their husband or their wife is cheating on them. And they know it. But they're in a state of denial. So they just go through the motions. Don't say nothing about it. So guess what happens when they don't say nothing about it? The person that's in the act of sin keeps doing it. You see, does that make any sense? To know something and not do nothing about it? That's kind of foolish. If I say so myself, I trust God too. But I trust God enough, enough to let me let him use me and not let me be a fool. You understand? Warning. Warning. You might want to stop what you're doing. Or a greater sin come upon you. 
Why are people so afraid? Because we live in a world of what? People pleasers. If you read the book of the prophets over and over again, God has sent a prophet. I don't want to hear what you got to say. Prophesy to me good things. Tell me peace when there is no peace. Tell me something good. Whether it was Jehoiakim or Jehoiakim and Uriah. Hey, don't go get Uriah. Every time he come around, he got something bad to say. Tell me something good, Uriah. Well, I'm going to tell you something good. It's up to you to figure out if it's sweet or not. You understand? I'm going to tell you something good. Right if it seems bad to you. I'm going to tell you something good. It's up to how you take it. It's up to how you listen to it. I talk to a lot of people. I just don't like to tell nobody nothing. Hmm. So I'm going to tell you to do the math. Most people don't like to tell nobody nothing. Don't like for nobody to tell them nothing. Do the math. They'd rather just be blind leaders of the blind. A bunch of blind people hanging together. You understand? Doing blind stuff. Stuff that does not profit. You understand? Because the prophet has ceased. The true prophet has ceased. The world is full of a bunch of fake prophets. Have not done this and that in your name? You did it falsely in my name. Do the math. You're not doing it correctly. Lord, Lord, away from me, you worker of inequity. Don't think that people can't use the word of God wrongfully. They can. Think about all the 400 false prophets that God sent the evil, a lying spirit on them. Because they've been lying to the people. And then Uriah was the one good one. The one that was willing to tell the truth. The one out of the 99 that was willing to tell the truth to the king. He wasn't scared of the king. He feared God. So he feared God enough to tell the king the truth. The rest of them feared the king. Make sense? You remember King David? King David. It was a man sent to King David. Hey, David. There was a man that had a a, a, a doe or a lamb and he cherished it and he loved it. he only had one but the other man he had many and the man he took the one lamb that the one man had and took it from himself and then David got mad what who is this man let me get him let me go get him he said you are that man he didn't care that David was king he feared the Lord and he had to tell David what the Lord told him to tell him and I'm not saying I'm perfect in this. Sometimes I hold my tongue too. I'm guilty too sometimes. I told you this word is not just for you. It's for me too. It's for everybody. God wants you to get out your comfort zone. Stop trying to be comfortable all the time. Sometimes a peacemaker has to say some hard words. You don't think so? It's all about balance. It's all about balance. Knowing how to utilize your tongue correctly. And the only way you can know how to use it correctly is if you got the Holy Spirit in you to let you know what to say, when to say it. Don't just speak out your own heart in regards to things. Because now you're going to sound like a fool. You're going to start bringing stuff that don't profit. What I would do, man, you know, what I would do, you know, and you lead the word out. You lead God out. You're trying to tell people all this worldly advice and you're leaving out the, the key element. Talk to God about it. You ever notice something? If you sit around with somebody and you don't say nothing and you just listen to them, people will pour out their problems to you. And you as a man of God or a woman of God, you just listen to them like, oh, ha ha, yes. You didn't open that door. You didn't open that can of worms. Now once you finish speaking, now let me speak. As an oracle of God. Do you understand? And then after you heard what they said. They can't deny the truth. Because their they own tongue has revealed the truth to you. The spirit of God said he'll bring all things into remembrance. You're not going to know everything. But you're going to know what you need to know right then. God didn't make psychics. He made good listeners. And good watchmen and good obedient people who are going to do exactly what he told them to do. Peter had no problem rebuking 
the, the sorcerer who's trying to buy the word of God. Had no problem rebuking them. He's like, pray on that. You understand? I can't give you this. Pray that God make your heart right. Because your heart ain't right. I can't give you this. You're trying to do it for the wrong reason. You're trying to do it for profit. I can't give you this. Pray to God. Even Paul sent one man, one wicked sorcerer away blind for misleading the people. Righteous judgment. You know, why are you afraid? Why are you scared? Ask yourself that. Why? Because you're busy, too busy trying to please people. Halloween is upon us. I'm going to tell you one more time. I'm not going to tell you. God's going to tell you one more time using me. Don't indulge in that holiday. It's not of God. It's coming up. Here it is. September the 29th. Here I am posting Halloween is not of God. It's up to you to listen. Or it's up to you to keep doing it blindly. Because your children love it. Because your parents took you there. I don't want to take something good from my kids. Something's good ain't good. I'm going to tell you about the devil and his gifts. I'm going to tell you something about the devil and his gifts. Let me tell you something about the devil and his gifts. They don't last long. One day out of the year, Halloween. One day he gave you. One day. God gave you candy to enjoy all the time. You can go to Dollar General right now and buy some candy for your kids without having them go out and beg with the bag out. I don't care what you're saying. That's what it is. Well, it's not begging if it's free. It's kind of weird that people that give away candy to little kids and pass by homeless people on the streets. Anyway, but anyway, the devil's gifts don't last. God said, come to me, all those who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. God's peace and God's rest and God's promises last forever. It's not a single day that can stop God from loving you. It's not a single day that can stop God from helping you. You see, the devil wants to give you something that's going to be quick. And then you got to go keep getting it. God's going to give you something that can last with you forever. Him. The Holy Spirit. You ain't got to pay for it. It's free. You understand? Christmas. Only one day. People go out and start prepping for Christmas in July. I got to get the Christmas ready. I got to get gifts ready. You understand? God can give you gifts any time. To me, Christmas every day. Following Christ is every day. Giving Jesus the honor is every day. Back in the day, I used to wonder why. It was a movement going on. People like, I'm trying to take the Christ out of Christmas. When I was young, I was like, that's messed up. That's so messed up. How they going to take Christ out of Christmas? How they going to take Christ out of Christmas? Because Christmas ain't about Christ for real. They didn't made it about him. So they can keep doing it. Well, you don't got to believe me. Go to your Bible. And read about the, the people that chopped down the tree. And then they put it in a stand. And then they deck it with gold and silver. And anyway, read your word. And you'll know what God wants you to know. But if you don't read it, you won't know nothing. And if you don't spread it, they won't know nothing. You understand? Warn people. Tell people the truth. Don't be afraid. You can stop doing something that other people are doing. And it save your life. And you can keep doing something that other people are doing and it can end your life. It can cause you to go to hell. I'm not saying it. It's in the word. You understand? You got two major holidays coming up. And both of them devilish. Christmas is the harder one. Because it got Christ in it. And Satan. That don't make sense. Santa, Satan. You got Christ and Satan. God said you can't serve two masters. Do the math. Don't you think that's serving two masters? Don't you think you're giving honor to Christ and you're giving honor to Santa Claus? But you think it's right. It is what it is. You teaching your kid Santa Claus bringing gifts. And Christ was born. This is about Santa Claus and about Christ. You're serving two masters. You're teaching your kids to serve two masters. It is what it is. Halloween is a pagan holiday. About worshiping the dead. About necromancy. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. You see, most people know where you worship Christ, he did. No. 
worship Christ because he's risen. Because <laughs> he's risen, he's alive. I'm not worshiping a dead man. I'm not worshiping a dead statue that can't talk. I'm worshiping the living God. Who are you worshiping? Have a blessed day.